you Sunday. Good morning. Somebody shout Jesus. Come on, somebody shout Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bless your name today, God. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Great is your faithfulness. And so we're grateful for his faithfulness. We're grateful that his mercies never, ever my, my, my. So we wrote another song. We want to sing it to y'all this morning. Let's do it. One, two. Here we go. Uh, one, two. Hey.
so much for joining us today. If you got a chance, make sure that you go up in the back, get you some coffee, get you some tea, hot chocolate. We have a station in the back for you. Also, if you have a young one with you under the age of two and you need to step out for the moment, we do have a calming room where you can still be able to stream the service. And if you have an older one with you all the way up until the sixth grade, we do have children's church. We have our youth, our E-team in the back that you can get your child checked in and you're able to be ministered to on their own level, right? So let's get ready to go higher in today's service. Welcome to Empowerment. Thank you, Jesus. We've done this one before. But in lieu of everything that's going on in our nation, we've got to keep our minds fixed on Jesus. The word says <laughs> we're in perfect peace. We keep our minds stayed on him, amen. So we're going to call his name. i 
to pray really quickly. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to take a moment, hallelujah, to talk to him real quickly. Hmm. Because there have been times, and even in my life, where I needed to call on my sister, I called on my mother, yeah, I called on my spouse, I called on my homeboy first. Thank you, Jesus, for a right mind to know to put you first. Whew. So right now, God, whew, first we receive your grace. We receive your forgiveness already, God. Whew, thank you, Lord. But with everything going on, God, with everything going on, right now we just make this declaration that we'll put you first, God. We will call you first, God. We will call you first. Because you've never left. You have continued to be faithful. We read this morning, great is your faithfulness. His mercies never come to an end. So it don't make no sense to call nobody else first but Jesus anyways. God, so we're going to continue to depend on you. We're going to continue to call on you first, God. Because our relationship with you is what matters. You are our strength, God. You have the master plan. You are our father, God. And we trust you with our life. We trust you with every move that we make. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless his name. When I call your name, when I call your name, uh, when I call your name, when I call your name, can y'all sing that with me? When I call your name, demons tremble, yes they do. When I call your name, everything has to line up right. Every knee shall bow when I, when I call your name, when I call your, when I call your name. When I call Have any witnesses in here that things happen when I call your name? When I call your name. When I call your name. My situation has to change And the enemy's got to go And everything's got to come together Oh, tell me Who can stand before us When we call on that Oh, 
open up your mouth and call the name Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. How I love you. How I bless you. How I adore you. I, I'm just grateful to be in the land of the living. I call your name. And when I call your name, demons got to flee. When I call your name. And so we call the name Jesus. 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 a lot of things, don't we, when stuff is going wrong, Kim? Do a lot of things. Girl, can you believe what he... Bro, can you believe what she... And look, gotta call on people. That's what we're here for. Some of us turn to the bottle. Some of us turn to that man or woman that we know, not the one that we're supposed to be turning to. Somebody say Amen turn to a lot of things. Some of us turn to work. I'm going to just throw myself in my work to just escape from all of the craziness that's going on. But can I get somebody that knows that the only name that matters to call when situations and trials and tribulations are rearing their ugly head. Does anybody know the name to call when things are going wrong when my kids are <laughs> being my kids, when my body's under attack, when my money's not doing what I need it to do. Does anybody know the name to call? Listen, he's more than a genie, right? This ain't about you getting what you need. It is about going to the person who has the answers to the questions that you've been asking. And some people go to other places to get the answer. But do I have anybody in the building that knows that when I need an answer to a question, there's only one name to call? And that name is Jesus Jesus. So, Father, we come in the mighty, ooh, matchless, power, powerful name of Jesus, the almighty, the, the all-sufficient one, the one who can meet every one of my needs, the one who's always been there and never left me, the one who, when I couldn't call on my friends and family, when my mama and my daddy and my brother and my sister and my, and my cousins and my children didn't understand, the one that I could always call on, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to say, Father, we need you. Uh, Father, we need, we need you in our building today. We need you in our community today. Somebody lift your hands if you need him in your family today. If you need him in your body today. If you need him in your money today. If you need him in your loved ones today. Uh, we come in the name that is above every name. The name that makes demons tremble. We come in the name of Jesus to say, Father, we need you. We want to have an experience with you. We want to, we, we don't want to just experience you here. Come with us, God. Go with us. While we're in here, giving you praise and worship, go to our situation out there and do what you do. God, come in this place. Move in this place. Stir up hearts and stir up minds. And Father, at the end of the day, we'll give you all of the praise. We'll give you all of the worship. And we'll give you all of the glory. It is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Somebody just shout amen. What does amen mean, Pastor Tori? Amen means it is so. And does anybody believe that it is so? What, what are you believing God for? You got to believe that it is so. Ah, oh, yes, somebody lift your hands and say it is so. Woo. We 
greet you. I'm so, I didn't have a chance to greet y'all earlier. Hey, y'all, I'm Pastor T, uh, and I'm just so excited that you all are here worshiping with us. We appreciate you, those watching online. Thank you for your patience while we got those technical difficulties figured out, but we appreciate you. Listen, we're getting ready to go into the Word. We are so excited. Could y'all do me a favor? I don't know if she's watching, uh, but our keyboard player, her name is Lauren. Lauren reached out to us this morning. Her baby was, was coughing and wheezing really bad, and so she decided to take the baby to, uh, to the doctor, uh, so that's why she's not here. Um, and then I got a couple of reports about some kids, you know, having some, some health issues. Can we just, and then of course, we know what happened in uh, Texas this week. Y'all, there's just so much. And it doesn't it just seem like the attack is focused on our children? Doesn't that, I told you all a couple of weeks ago that I believe that the next great revival that's going to hit our nation is going to be birthed in our schools, specifically in our high schools. I believe high school age students are going to be walking up and down the aisles, uh, the hallways of the church, of their school rather, and calling on the name of Jesus and, 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 and anointing and pleading the blood all over their campuses. So And so could we just for about 30 seconds right where you are, could you just lift up your voice on behalf of all the young people in our city, in our community, in our country, in our world. Can we lift that up? Come on, y'all, open up your mouth. Whether you have kids or you don't, you got, what happens with our young people impacts the future of how we're going. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on every young person, God. We call them forth now. We call forth the greatness and the anointing that's on the inside of them. In the name, yes, of Jesus. Father, we thank you that each and every young person, God, that comes into contact with us is a child of destiny, yes, that they have greatness and a calling on their life, yes. We thank you, God, that the streets no longer tell them who they are, but that they'll learn their identity in you. They'll learn their identity is in Jesus. Jesus, cover, cover our babies by the blood in the name of Jesus. Protect them. Put a hedge of protection all over around them, God, as their parents and grandparents and auntie and uncle and godmother and godfather. Give us wisdom and knowledge on how to raise them in the way that they should go. God, let them be anointed from the time they are birthed, God, to the time they leave this earth. Let them walk in their purpose and in their calling. Devil, take your hands off our kids in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I don't come to play games no more. I'm sick and tired of us losing our young people before they become all that they have been called to be. And so, devil, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off our kids. Take your hand off our future. Take your hands off of God. In the name of Jesus, let them walk and be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from the time that they're young. Let it happen and let it happen for them now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Somebody lift your voice and just bless the name of God for the future. Yes, 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 yes. They shall be all that God has called them to be. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm trying to move on, y'all. I promise I am. But we need them, don't we? We need them in our country. We need them in our schools, don't we? Yes, God. And so, Father, we thank you for everything you're doing and everything you're going to do in this place. Move by your spirit. And, of course, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Somebody say amen. Amen. And thank God. Hey, listen. We're getting ready to go to the Word. Just before you do, pay attention to the screen, and we'll be right back.
Amen. Somebody, just one more time, bless the name of the Lord today. Happy Sunday to you all. Of course, we give God praise for each and every one of you for being here uh, today. We are so excited about what God is going to speak to us. Of course, we do remember those. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Memorial Day. I learned from someone in the armed forces that it's, I mean, you know, it's not inappropriate, but, you know, uh, to say happy Memorial Day. Uh, because Memorial Day is the day that we remember those uh, who made the ultimate sacrifice, who gave their life uh, in, in, in military service. And so it's a time to reflect and to remember. Uh, do we have anybody here that served in the armed forces at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And of course, if you lost uh, any, 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 you know, uh, uh, brothers or sisters in armed forces, of course, we we do take this time to remember, and of course, we are keeping uh, that, that town in Texas in prayer. We're keeping Buffalo in prayer. We're keeping South California in prayer. So much going on uh, in the world today, and, you know, Jesus is the answer. Of course, thoughts and prayers, and, but I, I posted on Instagram something along the lines of prayer isn't the last step. It's the first step. We don't get to pray and say, all right, well, job's done. No. Pray and then act. Pray and then do. <laughs> right? And so thoughts and prayers, of course. But, y'all, now's the time. We got to do something about this. All right? Uh, we're not going to get into that whole discussion uh, right now. But let's continue to keep uh, this nation in prayer. Of course, we are in a new series called Back to Basics. Back to Basics. Uh, one of the things that is important to us here at Empowerment Church is that we not just know what to do, but that we understand why we do it. Uh, and so I believe that we'll do a back to basics type style of series uh, at least a couple of times a year. Uh, and so this time we're focusing in on our, our relationships. And two weeks ago, we talked about our uh, responsibility towards each other. Look at somebody and say, we need each other. We need people who will care for us, who will encourage us, who will partner with us, who will protect us, and who will pray for us. Uh, I, I had to reinforce this yesterday at PJ's. A lot of you all are really good at being caregivers. We got to learn how to be better care receivers, right? Hey, there are people who, who love you and care about you who want to see God's best for you, all right? Uh, you got to let them take care of you. And then last week, we talked about our responsibility as it relates to people outside of the church. Hey, listen, everything, everything, say everything. Everything that you're going through, that you've come through, that you've been through, you are going through it so that you can tell somebody else about the God that brought you out. Tell somebody you got to shine your light. You got to shine your light. Shine your light. And today, I want to talk about one more relationship that is vitally important for our understanding. And it's, it's one relationship that can drive us down or lift us up. And the relationship I'm talking about is your relationship with you. Your relationship with you. We're going to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18 in the Message Bible. Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 18 in the Message paraphrase of the Bible. And this is what it says. It says this, my counsel is this, live freely which means animated and motivated by God's spirit, then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness, for there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit, just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical uh, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit? Somebody lift your hands and say, I want to be led by the spirit. I want to be led by the spirit. So, during the 2020 quarantine, Elena and I uh, were looking for something to keep us from losing our minds. Uh, 
And so we got into Marvel movies. We watched the entire MCU, uh, not by release date order, but by timeline order. So now we're like, we're Marvel people. We're all into it. Of course, we saw Doctor Strange. But just before that, there was a series on Disney Plus called Moon Knight. And it's basically about a superhero who has multiple personalities. It reminded me uh, of a movie titled Split by a director named M. Night Shyamalan that was released in 2016. The film stars James McAvoy, who portrayed a man named Kevin Crumb, who suffers from dissociative identity disorder, uh, what we used to call multiple personality disorder. And while it's portrayed in a very imaginative way, uh, in the movie, the fact of the matter is that dissociative identity disorder is a very real thing. And it's characterized by having at least two distinct personalities amongst a host of other things, right? You know, memory loss or forgetfulness, anxiety. Uh, but the part that caught my attention is this. Each of the different personalities has different physical and physiological characteristics. For example, one personality requires glasses because their vision is impaired. The other personality in the same body requires no glasses. That is just strange to me. Uh, in other words, it's a mental condition that has different physical expressions. And while none of us in here, at least I hope none of us in here has 23 different personalities living inside of us, although some of, some, some spouses are looking at their spouse like, ah, you got at least five in there. No. <laughs> the truth is that all of us have at least two. There is a fleshly side and a spiritual side, a heavenly side and a humanly side side. And just like uh, dissociative identity disorder, each of our sides has a unique physical expression. Let me prove it to you. Somebody lift your hands in worship right now. Come on, just lift them. Yes. And just tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, just tell something to him. Yeah, yeah. Now, with those same hands lifted, imagine you in traffic in a rush and somebody cuts you off. This holy hand going to become an unholy finger. And that same mouth that you just said, hallelujah, get the. What, Rome, what, was this, what Paul said about this in Romans 7, 18 in the King James Version, he says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. Let me pause real quick. I know our camera angle is wild. Uh, we having some technical difficulties, so we had to do some rigging. Shout out to the production team, y'all, y'all, y'all. I appreciate y'all, seriously. So for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. At first he said, I know that in me, as if to say there was nothing good in me at all. But then he clarifies, he says, in me, wait, I mean in my flesh because he understood that I have this flesh, but once I gave my life to Christ, my flesh is no longer my totality. When I gave my life to Christ, the Spirit took residence in my heart, and I prayed to the Lord, and they laid hands on me, or I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and now I have the Spirit of God in my life, but I still have this flesh. All right, let me take this a step further. Uh, when you sleep, about 90 minutes into your sleep, you enter something called the REM cycle of sleep, R-E-M, rapid eye movement. Uh, your mind is very active at, during your REM sleep. This is when your dreams are the most intense. Uh, at the same time you hit REM sleep, uh, your brain is releasing a chemical into your body that causes paralysis in your body. Your body does this to protect itself because your dreams are so vivid that your body might start to act them out and you might get hurt. People who sleepwalk, uh, there is a disconnect between this hormone being released in their body and so they can walk around and begin to do stuff. Uh, there are actually documented cases of people seriously injuring themselves while sleeping because their body was supposed to be paralyzed but they had a sleep disorder. Now, again, your body does this as a protection mechanism, but think about it. I want you to think about this. Your body, your flesh, 
releases a chemical that stops you from acting out your dreams. This is not a medication you take. This is how your body was designed. Let me say it this way. Your body is designed to stop you from living out your dreams. This is not only concerning if you dream while you're asleep, but for those of us who got some big dreams and big goals and big visions, listen to me, your body, your flesh is literally designed to stop you from living them out. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I'm going to take this a step further. I'm building somewhere, I promise. I'm going to take this a step further. James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, okay? That includes your dreams, your visions, your passion, your goals. If they are uh, directed by God, they are good. Everything that's good came from God, okay? Now, Romans seven twenty one. Paul says this, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. In other words, when I want to do the good thing God has told me to do, there's always something right there telling me that I can't or I shouldn't or I won't. Now, uh, we, we, we read this scripture as if there is an external force stopping us. There's some evil thing that is, but think about it. Okay, if I wake up and I smell something bad, and I go, okay, well, the kids must have left something in here. I'll find it later. I'm going to go brush my teeth. And then I go to the bathroom, and I smell something bad. And then I go downstairs, and I smell something bad. And then I'm in the car on my way to work, and I still smell. There is not an external stench. It's me. Can I tell you something theologically? Satan is not omnipresent. Satan does not have the power that God has. God can be everywhere at the same time. Satan cannot. So if every single time I go to do good, evil is present with me, but Satan can't be everywhere I am, then where's the evil coming from? I, what's that? Where's the evil coming from? I know you're like, man, I'm not evil. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. This has absolutely nothing. I, I want y'all to hear this. This has absolutely nothing to do with the devil or an enemy or a hater or a lack of resources. I, again, the devil is not omnipresent. So if every time I go to do good, something evil is stopping me from doing it, there's only two people that's with me all the time, God and me. <laughs> and God's not stopping you from doing what God called you to do. Can I tell y'all something? This is, this is, you know, we spent a lot of time casting the devil out of situations he was never in. The truth of the matter is, we spent so much energy worrying about haters, and their na our names were never in their mouths. The truth of the matter is, I didn't need to cast the devil out, and I didn't need to get rid of the hater. I needed to get me out of the way. And when you think about it, that's more concerning. If it was just the devil, Wendy, we can take care of that. Luke 10 and 19 says, Jesus said, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt. If it was just the devil, oh, I can bind the devil. We got the power to overcome. He's a defeated foe. He don't got no power over us. And if it's just about haters, listen, you can take care of haters. Can I tell y'all? Oh, the life-changing, miraculous power. Yes, God of the block button. Mm. You don't have to interact with anybody that doesn't mean you well. You don't have to. 
You can block them on Facebook. You can block them on Instagram. You can block them on Twitter. You can block them from texting you. You can block them from calling you. You never have to interact with them if you don't want to. The real challenge is, how do I block me from me? So I'm, 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 I'm walking a little heavy. Y'all okay? Y'all all, all right? We're going to be okay. I promise. We're going to come up for air in a second. Now, this is not to say, I got to say this because I don't want to take it too far. This is not to say that there is not an enemy that attempts to get to stop us from doing what the Lord uh, said for us to do. And this is not to say that you don't have people who want to see you fail. But this is to say that the first and greatest threat to your destiny is not some external force. Rather, it is your own flesh. This is challenging because the devil's very sneaky, but he didn't make you, so he doesn't know you. And your haters don't like you probably because they don't know you either. But your flesh knows exactly what to tell you to get you to stop yourself. And not only that, if you remember what I just said about dreaming, your flesh does this because it thinks it's trying to protect you. And so the excuses that the flesh comes up with are at the very least reasonable. You know what? I think I'm going to work out. And your flesh goes, the knees, the knees, you can't. You sure you have having knee problems? And you end up doing nothing because your flesh, not the devil, has convinced you that trying is more dangerous than staying. And then when the diabetes kicks in, Tori, we bind the devil. Devil didn't drink five, six Cokes a day. Tori, you did. Can I tell you that I believe that there are some of us who are in here who have been losing this fight so much because you were in a fight you didn't even know you were engaged in. At some point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this differently, too. At some point, we're going to talk about how, um, how the flesh is designed. The flesh is designed. We'll probably talk about it next week. The flesh, the Bible says, is enmity with God. Can I, let me tell you something. You will never train your flesh to live for God, ever. Your, listen to me. Your body will never desire kale more than it does french fries, ever. Ever. This isn't about, un, this isn't about you know, the, the flesh is doing what it does. And can I, let me tell you something else that you probably won't hear a lot of preachers say. You need your flesh. We got any kids in here? Okay. When Elena and I made our children, we did not do it by the Spirit. You need your flesh for some things. The bread of life is great, and you're going to consume the bread of life. But at some point when your stomach is hurting, you got to eat. You got to eat. That's a, you need your flesh. So this is not about destroying the flesh or burying the flesh. This is about putting the flesh where it's supposed to go, and the flesh is supposed to go under the spirit. This is not about getting rid of flesh. This is about strengthening your spirit. The question is how? What can you do to strengthen your spirit so that you can start to win some of these battles that you've been losing? And, and I want to give you four ways today to strengthen your spirit. Now, these are not all the tools. These are just the tools that the Lord gave me uh, to give to you today. There's more, um, there's many, many more, but I want to give you these four today because I believe that these are four that you can start doing right now. All right, number one, everybody say number one. Consume the word. Everybody say consume the word. I didn't say read it. I said consume it. Take it in. Matthew 4, the Bible says that Jesus was led away by the Spirit to be tempted. Uh, and when you look at Matthew 4, verse 2, it said that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and it says that he was hungry. Now, has anybody in here ever been hungry? No, I mean like hungry, hungry. I mean like maybe I can donate some blood to get a cookie hungry. I mean mayonnaise sandwich. I mean bread and mayonnaise, and that's it. Maybe a slice of cheese. I mean, 
paying for food off the dollar menu with old coins in your car and the cup holder hungry. I mean, hungry. I mean, hungry where, where, where you, you can change the U to an A. You pass hungry, you hangry. Good morning, good morning. Oh, ooh, she, needs to, she needs some food in her. How, how long had it been since you eaten? A couple hours, maybe a couple days, maybe. Jesus had not eaten in a month and a half. He's past hungry. He's past hungry. Probably past hangry. This, yeah, he's, and the Bible records it so we know he wanted food. And the Bible says in verse 3 that the temp tempter, the enemy says, well, since you're so hungry, just turn these stones into bread. The enemy challenges him with what he wants. But I can imagine the word inside of Jesus that he had in him. God will prepare a table, a feast before me in the presence of my enemies. Jesus is probably saying, I know that I'm hungry, but if I just hold on to God, I know that God's going to provide a way somehow. And so Jesus answers in Matthew 4, 4. He says, but it, it, he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Notice here, when Jesus answers the enemy, he quotes directly from the word. Verse 4, he answers, it is written. Verse 7, Jesus said to him, again, it is written. Verse 10, then Jesus said, be gone, Satan, for it is written. It is written is referring to the scripture. Then notice what happens in verse 11. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and were ministering to him. That word ministering also means feeding him. Here's the lesson. When I'm struggling between what I want to do and what I know to do, I need to have enough word in me to sustain me. When I want to call him or her, because I'm never getting married anyway, so I might as well, I need to know Ruth chapter 4 verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When what I want to do is say, forget all these bills, y'all can have all this, I'm going back to the streets, I gotta lean on what I know to do, Psalms 37, 25, I've been young, now I'm old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. When I want to give up and throw in the towel, what I need to know to do is Galatians 6, 9. Be not weary in well-doing because sooner or later, I'm going to reap if I just don't throw in the towel. You got to consume the word. You got to go deep in it. All right, let me keep going. Number two. Everybody say the word meditation. Meditation. There is a word that occurs in Scripture 74 times, all almost exclusively in the book of Psalms, and that word is the word selah. It means to stop, pause, to be silent, and think about what was just read. Tom Watson said this, the reason we come away so cold from reading the word is because we do not warm ourselves at the fire of meditation. The word is alive and full of, of, of rich and wonderful revelation. But when we don't allow our spirit the opportunity to synthesize all of that information, we might just miss the revelation. Let's look at Psalm 119, verse 55 in the message paraphrase. It says, I meditate on, on your name all night, God, treasuring your revelation. Whenever my phone is getting ready to be updated, there is a certain requirement that must take place. If I go to update my phone and my phone is not charging or does not have enough charge, the update will fail. And this is important because my phone updates to get the most up-to-date information, but if it has not sat in silence to be charged, it will not be allowed to update. In the same way, when it's time for the Lord to download new and fresh revelation and updates into my spirit, if I have not sat in silence to say la, I'll be ineligible for a fresh move of God. When I say say la, meditation bridges the gap between hearing from God and speaking to him. Prayer, prayer is a two-way conversation. But so many of us only do the talking. When do we ever just sit in silence to allow God to talk back to 
us. Everybody say the word meditation. All right, let's go into the deep waters. Number three, praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Speaking in tongues is what I'm talking about. Just so we're clear, this is a church that believes in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. We do. The question then becomes, how does praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, how does that strengthen my spirit? Let me show you what it says in Jude chapter 1 verse 20. It says, but you beloved, build yourself up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost builds up your faith. How does this happen? Two ways. First, it happens because when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, when you are praying in the Spirit, you are, your spirit is uh, directly communicating with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. The first part of verse uh, 2 says, For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. Sometimes I need to talk directly to God to get through this inner battle that's going on. When you, you, you have been in elementary school and you have an elementary school bully, you can, I mean, if I'm in fifth grade and you in fifth grade, all right, we're going to square up. But if I am in fifth grade and you're a high schooler, well, I need some extra, that's when I go get daddy involved, a big brother involved, okay? All right, because this is something bigger than I can handle. When I pray in the Holy Ghost, that's my way of saying, oh, what I'm dealing with, I don't have the expertise, I don't have the knowledge, I don't know how to make this work, so daddy, I need you to go ahead, come on in, step in, take care of this for me. And guess what he does? Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring, bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. I, 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 sometimes I got to call in reinforcements. But secondly, and more importantly, is this. Praying in the Holy Ghost bypasses the internal enemies of your faith. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to read all of 1 Corinthians 4, 2. It says, for one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. And then he says this. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. When I pray in the Holy Ghost, no one understands you, not even you. So if I pray in my understanding and I say, oh Lord, I need a car, immediately my flesh kicks in. Now you know you can't afford no car. Now you know you don't have no credit score for no car. Now you know the best car you're going to get is a little hoopty and it's going to be breaking down. That's the, the first thing your flesh does. You know you ain't got no money. You know your credit score jacked up. You, but when I pray in the Holy Ghost, not even I understand what I'm saying, so my flesh doesn't have the opportunity to negate what I'm praying for. It's, it's, it's so interesting. It's so interesting that, you know, when... Every time you go to make a move, especially when you go to make a move for God, immediately flesh starts telling you why you shouldn't, why it's more comfortable to not, why it's more comfortable to just stay. But can I tell you something? I said this last week, I think. I don't remember when I said it. It's all running together. God is found in the areas of your uncomfort, discomfort. If you only do what's comfortable for you, what you need God for? I got to step out. Peter, Peter couldn't walk on water. No human can walk on water, but he stepped out to do the impossible because he knew God was right there if I fall. Can I tell you, uh, this is, now this ain't in my notes, but there's some, some of y'all are in here, y'all haven't gotten the things that you've been praying for because you've been playing it too safe and trying to be too comfortable. It's time to take the step. Step out. Either God is God or he ain't. Either I can walk on water or I can't. But can I tell you something? If I go to walk on water because I was listening to God and I start to fall, that means when I lift up my hand and say, help me, he's going to be right there to pull me up. Or I can stay in the boat where it's comfortable. Or I can stay in the boat where it's cool. 
I don't have to worry about drowning. I don't have to worry about sinking. Or I can step out and go with God. Okay. All right. Number four. This is it. Joining a church. Joining a church strengthens your spirit. It strengthens our spirit by consuming the word, by meditation, by praying in the Holy Ghost. And number four, by joining a church. Church strengthens our spirit in two ways. First, it's the place where I can come to learn more about God, who he is, and his plan for our lives. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But just a few verses earlier, it says, how can they hear without a preacher? Church strengthens our spirit uh, because it's the place where we hear the word of God through the preaching and teaching as directed by the Holy Spirit. But understand this, I want y'all to hear me. The act of walking into the church building does not in and of itself strengthen the spirit. Because it's not the church building, it's the church community that strengthens the spirit. It's being surrounded by people who are trying to win their internal battles, just like you all. And this is why Paul said in Romans 1 and 12 that we mutually encourage each other's faith, both yours and mine. I encourage your faith, you encourage mine. Paul said that when we get together, I'm not just coming to encourage you, I need you to encourage me too. And when you do, we'll encourage her, and then she'll encourage her, and then she'll encourage him, and then we'll all leave and be more encouraged. And by the time we leave this place, our spirits are going to be on fire. We're going to feel like we can conquer the world. Not only that, I told you, come on Austin, I'm done. I told you that there is an internal battle going on between our spirit and our flesh. Between what we know to do and what we want to do. And inevitably, it happens every time, you're going to reach a point where you will yield to the flesh instead of the spirit. It's going to happen. Look, look at your neighbor say, it's going to happen. You are going to fall. You're going to make a mistake. You're going to flip up. You're going to, it's, it's, you're going to want to do good all the time, but evil is always present. And one of these times, you're going to cut them out. You don't want, no, 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 no. We're not glorifying it. We're not glorifying it. Listen, I'm trying my best to hold it and not say anything and be a good Christian and be a good this and be a, but they just kept picking at me and you know what? I went off. Anybody ever been there before? Some of y'all ain't lifted your hands this whole time. Look at, the, the, here's the challenge. You're going to fall. This is why church strengthens your spirit. Because when you fall, church is the place where when we fall, we can come back and get restored. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 in the New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should forcefully, no, should yell at them and tell them, you're going to hell. Gently and humbly help that person get back onto the right path. Be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Verse 2, share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. This is why church strengthens your spirit because church is the place where I'm supposed to go and say I'm struggling in this area and I need some help and it's not the job of the church to judge and send that person to hell. No, the Bible says it's our responsibility to restore. <laughs> the challenge is when he first came in and said I need help, I can't stop. We said, oh, you can't go here. And when she came in and said, I can't stop using, we sent her to hell. And then when they stopped coming, then we sent them to hell because they don't come to church no more. I speak and say and declare over this house that Empowerment Church will be a place of restoration. This is a place that's going to be free of judgment. 
The only thing we want people to feel when they come in is the love of God. And guess what? As they come and build their spirit up more and more and their spiritual dog starts to win some fights, the atmosphere will change them. I told somebody coming in, he said, man, I'm trying to quit these cigarettes. I said, look, if you go from a pack a day to half a pack a day, you better praise the Lord. That is a testimony. Some of us... The challenge is some of us are saying, I'm only going to praise them when I'm totally delivered. But can I tell you, going from two to one is deliverance. Going from five to three, that's deliverance. The problem is we want the finish line, but we've got to understand this is a process. People are in process. So keep coming. Keep being built up. Keep being restored. Keep falling. We're going to keep picking you up. Yep, yep, yeah, we sure are. We sure are. And one day, here's what's going to happen. One day, their spirit will become so strong that they'll be able to win it on their own. And then guess what happens? Their life becomes a testimony that God did it before and God can do it again. That's why John said in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood gave us salvation, but to overcome this internal struggle, I need your testimony. I was talking to somebody and I said, I think our next communion service might be a good old fashioned testimony service. We might just open up the floor and just let people share how good God has been to them because I need to know that I'm not the only person to have dealt with this and I need to know that if God can bring you out, then he can bring me out and little by little, our spirit gets stronger and stronger and we start to win some battles that we used to lose. Little by little, I go from always cursing you out to going... You know what? Not even worth it. It used to catch me, catch me five months ago. Catch me five months ago. You say the right thing, you're gonna get everything. And now, just being amongst these people, being in this community, doing the growth track and being a part of a small group and learning about God and seeing about how other men and other women of God can conduct themselves, I'll start to go, you know what? Say what you want. I'm believing that you can become unoffendable no matter what is said to me. What can you say to somebody that to rattle them that can't get rattled? What can you say? No matter what you say, you ugly. Hmm. My wife think I'm cute. You fat. Oh, want me to love. What, 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 what you, what you? The challenge is too many of us. Flesh been winning. <laughs> Flesh been real strong. But as you keep coming, as you consume the word, meditate, pray in the Holy Ghost, keep joining, being, being a part of a community. Some of the battles that you used to lose, you start to win little by little. As we come and we are a part of a community and we share with each other and we learn from each other, you thought, can I tell you, it's a trick of the enemy to, to get you to believe that you're the only person going through what you're going through. Can I tell you that? He's trying to get you to think you're in isolation. No, y'all. Everybody, say, somebody say everybody. Everybody got something. telling them, we're getting ready to pray. I was telling them about the prayer ads that we posted up on Facebook and how folks have been sending in their prayer requests and we've been praying for folks and it's been just such a blessing. But y'all, you should see some of these prayer requests. People are going through hell. And the enemy has convinced them they're going through it alone. We need each other. And look, 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 you go to their profile pictures, go to their profile pages on Facebook, cheesed up. 
having a blast in the DM saying, Pastor, pray for me. My daughter's going through cancer. You can't use the surface to, to, to dictate what people are going through. People are going through so much. We need to know about what you went through and how God brought you out and how you almost lost the house and how you almost lost this and how you lost your child and how you lost your spouse and how God somehow, some way was able to put all of that back together again. We need to know. Everybody say, consume the word. Meditation. Praying in the spirit. Joining a church. Just four ways that you can strengthen your spirit. Four things you can do right now. We didn't even talk about worship. We didn't talk about fasting and praying. We didn't talk about intercession. We didn't talk about giving. But these are four things that you can do to begin to strengthen your spirit. And little by little, little by little, you'll start to overcome. Anybody ready to be an overcomer? Anybody ready to start passing some of these tests? Lord, I'm tired of taking the same test over and over and over and over and over again. Lord, I'm ready for some new tests. Lord, Jesus, I'm ready for something new. Can I tell you, God is saying, I can't release new to you until we're sure that you've got the old one figured out. But little by little, look at somebody and say, you about to pass this test. You about to pass this test. You about to pass this test. And if you're here now and you're saying, you know what, Pastor T, flesh been winning. Spirit feels weak. You know, the people that say, man, I wish I could feel closer to God. What you are literally saying in that moment is my spirit is weak. I'm missing a connection to God. If you're here, you're saying, man, Pastor T, my spirit's weak. I need, I need to get connected. I need to get connected first to God. And then to this community, if you're here and you're saying, you know what, I need, I need a relationship with Jesus. I, I need to make sure that he is the Lord of my heart. Or you might be saying, you know what, I have a relationship with Jesus, or I used to have one, and now I'm ready to recommit my life to him. Or you might be saying, I, I mean, I know Jesus, I just, I'm not a part of a community, I'm not a part of a church. And I'd love to join or at least learn more about what God is doing here at Empowerment. If any of those three things are you, I want you to do me, favor, do me a favor with every head bowed and every eye closed all over this building. No one's looking around. Having a personal moment right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for each and every person here who needs a, a relationship with you or needs to renew their relationship with you or needs a church home, needs a pastor, needs somebody that can speak into them and see where I am and pull out of me everything that God has deposited into me. If they're here, Father, speak to their hearts. Push them to move. Push them to action. Confirm that it's actually you. And let them know, Father, that you're there with them. That this, that this pulling that they're feeling on their heart and on their spirit, the thing that's causing their leg to shake or their heart to beat fast, it's you. Confirm it for them. Let them know that you're talking to them, in them and through them. In Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, everybody repeat this prayer after me. Everybody say, Dear Lord God, I pray now that you will come into my heart, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. I thank you that you came. I thank you that you died and I thank you that you rose for my victory I claim that victory and say that I'm saved I'm saved I'm saved in Jesus name amen hey listen if you prayed that prayer for the first time can I tell you welcome to the body of Christ welcome to the family come on empowerment let's welcome them to the family If you prayed that prayer for the first time, there is a something on your uh, seat called a connection card. We can bring the lights up, Heath, called a connection card. Uh, you can 
fill that out or you can scan the QR code behind me and just let us know that you're uh, rededicating or committing your life to Jesus uh, and we want to connect with you. If you're watching online, uh, you can click that connect with us button uh, in the description box because we want to celebrate with you. And if you're here because, or if you prayed that prayer because, you know what, I want to make this my church home or at least I want to learn some more about what God is doing in and through empowerment. Again, welcome to the family. Come on, empowerment. Say welcome to the family. Your next step is to take what we call the growth track. This is where you can find out more information about empowerment, who we are, our mission, vision, and values. And then it's done in two weeks. Uh, or in two sessions. One session, you learn about empowerment, who we are, what we do, what we believe, our mission, vision, and values. But then we also have a spiritual gift and personality assessment so that we can figure out your spiritual DNA uh, and so that we can understand who we are, who you are, and how we come together to make and build the kingdom of God together. All right? And so if that's you, you scan the same QR code and just indicate that you are interested in taking the growth track. We do the growth track every Monday at 6 o'clock p.m., although tomorrow is Memorial Day, so we won't have it live, but we can, we'll can we send you out the recordings and all of that stuff so that you can watch on your own time and at your own pace. And finally, if this is your first time here, if this is your first time visiting uh, with us at Empowerment, first and foremost, welcome. Thank you for being here. We're just super excited that you came. We have a special gift that we want to give to you. Do us a favor and text the word welcome. The word is welcome, W-E-L-C-O-M-E, -E, to 504-800-8440. Click the link, fill out the form. Meet Pastor Elena in the back in the rear. She has a special gift just for you. Amen. Were you blessed in this place today? Look at somebody and say, no more losing. We're going to win. All right, y'all, just before we go, let's take our time uh, to give, uh, to, to sow into the kingdom of God in the way uh, that God has uh, called us to. Uh, you can, of course, if you're here in the uh, auditorium, you can use the envelope that is in your seat. Uh, you can also give on Cash App. It's dollar sign empowerment NOLA. Uh, or you can text the amount you want to give uh, to 84321. If you're watching online, all of the giving links are in the description box. Uh, or you can go to the website empowermentnola.com. Uh, and we're really excited excited uh, about it. Of course, we do believe in the tithe. 10% uh, of everything that comes into the house belongs to the Lord uh, for the building of his kingdom, not for our personal enrichment so that God can continue to do what God has said he would do, uh, which is to build the kingdom. We are very excited about what God is doing in and through empowerment, being able to pray for people, uh, doing our outreach here at West Jeff. Beginning in the new school year, we'll do our monthly outreaches at Helen Cox as well. On the third Monday, we'll go do our prayer circle before school. We'll pie donuts for the kids and cater lunch for the teachers, administrator, and staff uh, at Helen Cox as well. We're doing, we're forming some great partnerships and being able to do all that God has called us to do. Uh, but the way we scale that up and the way that we're able to do that is through your generosity. So thank you. Thank you, Empowerment. Thank you, people of God, for being generous uh, and for sowing uh, into what God is doing here. Uh, while you're giving, while you're giving, we are asking folks again uh, to sign up to serve. We have a thing here where we say serve one Sunday a month. Just one Sunday. One Sunday, you can come a couple, like an hour early and help us put out chairs or set up equipment or hang lights or whatever it is. One Sunday a month. And this is how it goes. A lot of people don't, you know, serve in church because it's like, man, I don't want to give up every Sunday. No, we're not talking about every Sunday. We're talking about one Sunday. Everybody say one Sunday a month. Go and help the kids one Sunday a month. Come a couple hours or an hour early to help us set up one Sunday a month. Come and serve and, and volunteer and do camera and, and hang lights and all that stuff and be in the parking lot one Sunday a month. Everybody say one Sunday a month. And the way this works, come help us set up coffee and, the, and, and everything that happens. And the way it works is if you do one Sunday and you do one Sunday and you do one Sunday and you do one Sunday, we have an entire month covered and all you had to do is one. I can't wait. I can't wait uh, until until our youth teachers are able to come and sit in one Sunday, right? So that they can get some of this word too uh, and worship with their families. One of the things that I used to 
that used to very challenge me when I was working in ministry was not being able to worship next to my wife. Yeah, we want our families to be able to worship together every now and then, but it only works if we're all coming together. All right, all coming together. So if you want to serve, just do us a favor. Text the word serve to 504-800-8440. Serve, S-E-R-V-E, to 504-800-8440. Click the link. There's some buttons. You can say, oh, I'm interested in this, interested in that. There might be some things that you're interested in that we don't have. Here's the thing about being a church plant. Look, if we don't have it, it's because you haven't started it. Somebody came to me and said, I want to be a part of the prison ministry. I said, hey. Ain't no prison ministry. If you want to be a part of the prison ministry, that means you want to start the prison ministry, right? Because, but that's okay. That's okay because we're, we're doing what God has called us to do. If it's in your heart to do it, guess what? You get to be a part of the ground floor right here at Empowerment. So even if there's something that you want to do or that you have an expertise in that maybe is not listed, there's a space where you can put other or something like that. And uh, myself and Pastor Wendy is going to reach out to you uh, to get you plugged in because we really are really, really excited about what God is doing. And it's very important for us all to come together to do it. Look at somebody and say, we need each other. We need each other. Amen. Amen. And again, uh, uh, again, of course, we acknowledge uh, those who may have lost loved ones in the armed forces. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. Just take some time and, and just, if you see somebody who is a service member, say thank you for your service. All right? Thank you for your service. Intercessors, to our online intercessors, you can go ahead to the Zoom room. Now, intercessors here, get ready. We're about to pray. Uh, we pray. Oh, nope. Pray that you had enough time to complete your offering. Oh, y'all streaming with my uh, phone. Okay. All right. I promise I'm going to give, all right? But I don't have my phone to give because they're streaming with my phone. But everybody do me a favor. Put your phone, your offering envelope in your right hand. Why your right hand, Pastor T? It's called the Hand of Fellowship. This is what they used in the in, back in the day uh, when they wanted to extend fellowship to somebody. They used the right hand, all right? Let's lift it and pray together. Father, we thank you that you give us seed to sow. And we thank you for the seed. We thank you for multiplication. Thank you that we are the head and, the t and not the tail. That we're above and not beneath. That we lend and we do not borrow. And that everything we put our hands to prospers. And we receive it today. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and give thanks. Amen and thank God. Uh, do us a favor. There's going to be a bucket coming by you in just one moment. You can put uh, that offering envelope uh, in there. It was important to us. Heath, come on, you can come move this. Everybody do me a favor, stand to your feet. If, you're, if the bucket hasn't come around yet, don't worry, it's coming. We have been intentionally having our time of prayer. Thank you, Heath. Having our time of prayer on Facebook, and we're getting ready to go. Um, and we've been uh, asking people, hey, just how can we pray for you? And one of the things that came up is we, we want to be able to meet some of these prayer needs as, like immediately. It's one thing for somebody to put in a prayer request and get prayed for, you know, a couple days later. It's another thing to come here and have somebody touch and agree with you. And so our intercessors are coming. Actually, we're going over there. We're going over there. Uh, Gaynell, Elvira, we can go this way. Um, if you'd like prayer, if you want somebody to touch and agree with you, do me a favor, just line up along these bleachers because our intercessors want to touch and agree, pray with you and pray for you. If you're watching online,